Welcome to the lounge. Yes, an oasis of betting loveliness. Some might say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the man with the hat is the one who wears one all the time because he has 173 at home. It's uh, uh, Lord Anthony Dunkley, NFL, horse racing, and all things of a murderous nature in his <laughs> makeup. And next to me is the one and only, the happiest man in the world at the moment, seeing as his team are reaching the latter stages of the FA Cup and indeed are set for uh, straight promotion from League <laughs> One to the Championship, no less. It'll be a double whammy for him and we will be having a celebration in the offices when it comes to fruition. <laughs> it is the one and only Mad Dog. Hello everyone, how's it going? Hey, you How are you Paul? Good. Good. Talking about um, videos, uh, we, we just filmed a video for your personal Facebook page, didn't we Paul? You know, what they actually did is they put something in a drink of mine and realised the effect would only last about two minutes and shouted at me and I shouted back. It's good it, to get things off your chest. Absolutely. Um, I thoroughly recommend watching this video. It's a really, really good video. It's, um, it's called You Want Some and it's Paul's rant and rave on the week's sporting events. And if you go to our Facebook page, we've, we've, we've shared it from his page, but if you want to go onto his personal page, it's Paul Jacobs hyphen champion tipster and I really advise that you watch it. It is it's very good. Paul was on good form. And post your own replies as well. Oh, yeah, if you want to run so. out then be, feel free. Everybody's got a view, haven't they? Exactly. You know, um, you know who coined that phrase? Get it off my chest. My Auntie Maud. <laughs> she was a Buxton lady. <laughs> uh, let's start off with a bit of NFL because we've come to the last four teams in the National Football League and Certainly have. They are four of the very best teams around. I think, I think we've got, probably got the right four, possibly bar one, and you could argue each way. Um, but Duncan, I think you, you're going to be up all night. You're going to be watching these games. You, you're definitely going to have a Super Bowl party of, uh, of some kind. And um, You're going to have a look at the NFC clash. And, and uh, Seattle, yeah. after the first three or four weeks of the season, looked as though they were going to bomb out, and, which is normally the case, actually, for defending champions. But mm. as the season's gone on, they've become stronger. I'm just sure, it's just showing how strong they are. They, as you say, the first three or four weeks, it was looking pretty ropey for the Seahawks. Um, but then, suddenly, they just snapped straight back into gear. Um, they won on a, an unbe a long, unbeaten run. Um, it's just... And the line at the moment against the Packers is minus seven. And I think the shoe wins the cover. They are just... Their, their defence is, is unrivaled. Um, uh, they're my most likely idea of the winner of the Super Bowl by far. They're about five to four at the moment, I think, on the exchanges. Is that about right? I'd say so. Yeah. I, I'm yeah. out, out of the two. I think they're gonna. I think they're gonna beat Green Bay, even if they don't cover. I think they'll beat them. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd, and then it's the Super Bowl, and they showed last year what, what they do to teams who have nervy starts, and most teams have a nervy start against the Seahawks. So Seahawks minus seven against Green Bay. I think it's a fair enough line means they have to win by a touchdown and a field goal, pretty much, or a touchdown and a safety. Um, they limited Carolina to, to 17 points in the last game, uh, 17 or 18, I'm, I'm not quite sure. After a while, Paul, I turned it off because it was so, the result was never in doubt. I knew they were going to go through and I knew they were going to win. They had to cover minus 10 in the last game, 10 and a half, and they did, easily. So, the Seahawks, there's nothing more to say. The Legion of Ooh. <laughs> they actually took that from Luke Donald. Okay, let's talk about Football League. Some big yep. matchups this weekend. The one that took my eye was Berry against Wickham in League Two. That's it, you're Gig right. Lane. I'm That's good. a cracker jack, isn't it? <laughs> it is. I'd love to go to Gig Lane. Should be a cracking game. Very hugely underperformed this season. Where you yeah. go? Um, you go beside the seaside by any chance? I'm not actually. Um, I'm actually going firmly into a. To a Landlocked Wolverhampton. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> um, um, but um, actually, um, I'd like to uh, have a little um, two up, up my own horn for last week's tip of uh, 31 to 20 for Sheffield United to beat Preston. Preston were on a um, winning run of 10 matches, so, that, so I did, did pretty well to uh, tip back there at 31 to 20. Well and um, this week, I've, I've actually gone for an anytime goal scorer. And it's a brand new striker for Wolverhampton. They've actually signed Arsenal's Benic Afobe, who I'm sure many of you will remember scored a goal for MK Dons earlier this season against Manchester oh, United, yeah. as, did, as did most of, of, of their team, actually, in that Manchester United. Yeah. Um, it's a good day. <laughs> um, and many people will say um, he's playing up against 
tougher teams now because he's making the leap from League One to the Championship as he's been on loan at MK Dons where he did very well. He's actually scored 19 goals this season already, so he's a striker in form. But he's up against ch the Championship wh um, whipping boys now, Blackpool, who are just a pretty abysmal team. They've played 14 matches this season away from home, haven't won any of them. So he's bound to get plenty of chances at Molyneux to open his account on his debut. And I think at, eight, at 81 to 50, any time scorer, I think that's a decent bet on um, a scorer to, to, to score there. Because Wolves do score f for fun at home, and they've only not scored once at home this season. So I think they will score, and I think he's the best bet to, to do so. Is he, will he start? I think he will start, yeah. I think if you're going to pay that amount of money for someone, why, why wouldn't you start him? Yeah. Yeah, you can't buy confidence sure. either. Especially as they played 120 minutes in in midweek in the uh, uh, driving yeah. snow, so there's going to be some tired legs in that squad. In whereas he, game, whereas, yeah. whereas he comes in fresh, so play him up against a poor side. Hopefully he'll he'll get the goal. Fresh as a daisy. Mm. Uh, but let's uh, talk horse racing very quickly. Uh, 12:50 at Lingfield. I really like this race actually. It's a seven to start the day, and what is a really good card to be fair. There's a there's a nineteen thousand pound handicap and another ten thousand pound handicap, but I thought this was the possibly the best betting opportunity. A horse called Top Tempo, who actually ran and met this is a seller. He actually ran in a listed race at Goodwood last year. How the mighty have fallen when they race on the all weather. It's amazing. He's obviously not as good on the sand as he's on turf. He was rated eighty six at one stage. I think he's going to be very hard to beat. And he's Trading around about four to one of them, which is a ridiculous price. So top tempo in the twelve fifty and um, at lingers uh, on Saturday. Now, Mister Morley, what have you got to say for yourself? <laughs> Absolutely, Ken Morley. Ken I Morley. Hope, I really hope that, that you people at home have been watching Celebrity Big Brother because it has been incredible. After three days, there was two people ejected from the house already. <laughs> it's incredible scenes. Um, yeah, basically, um, it, there's been a lot of talk in. Uh, my uh, friend group that it, that that it seems to be like this year they um, took a hundred celebrities 100. and then found the fifteen people that failed their psychological tests and then put them all in the house. They're on. <laughs> I mean, we have a few problems with the people in the office and easy office, but this one absolutely. Yeah, this is a. It's not a very fun house. It seems like nobody's having fun in the no, house. No, they all have it's, a They've got an agenda, haven't they? It's all. It, it's all very petty and, but it must be a nightmare to live in that house because there's a lot of delusion <laughs> happening in that house when um, Kate Hopkins comes across as one of the more normal people in the house you know that people have got issues in, in, um, in that house but the one person who, who has no issues and is the national treasure and is still the favourite to, to win he started at 3-1 to one, he's still at 3-1 to one because he's stayed out of all the drama and he's still just Cheggers and that is Keith, Keith Chegwin who <laughs> is, an, is an English national treasure and unless <laughs> unless he turns into Ken Morley in the next two weeks um, I can see him definitely being in the final I do worry a little bit that he's fading in, into the background a little bit too much because he's letting stuff go on around him. But maybe once um, the numbers dwindle, he'll um, start to shine his own personality. Um, but my three tips at the start, um, Andy Post, were Chegas at 3-1 to one, and he stayed at 3-1. to one. Michelle at 12-1 to one is now 9-2 to two, and she's doing really well in there. Um, she's um, a very funny, um, bright, strong woman and I, I, I think that um, she'll do well. And I actually went for Perez because I thought he was such a good character. And it turns out it's not a great choice. Um, he's actually um, drifted up to 50s because he is possibly the most annoying man in the world. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's so <sounds> <laughs> um, But in terms of keeping him in the house, please, if you are voting on this show, please, please keep him in the show. Not just for my uh, tip here, um, but he is TV gold. He has no self-awareness um, to how annoying he is. And that just makes him more annoying to the housemates and makes it even better for us to watch on TV. Can I just say, my friend Steve, who loves all this stuff, he watches all, yeah. reads all your comms and watches uh, The Lounge. He's a very sad man. Steve, you're a very sad man. Because <laughs> I'm about to reel on The Lounge that you fancy Katie, which is like... Wow. Oh, it's like, go and get an eye test. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that's, there's someone... Each to their own, isn't Each there? Each to their own. Each to their own. <laughs> Idiot bloke. <laughs> 
anything else to say this week? Easy odds happening, going on? Um, I would like to, to give a massive congratulations to our Wednesday Wager winner, Philip Perkins, mm. and 25 to 1 tipped Sevilla to beat Granada last night 4 0. No! Which was just an incredible tip. It was oh, placed no, about 10 minutes previous to kick off, so we clearly thought about it thoroughly. Or he was desperate or, late. Or he was yeah, desperately yeah. late. Um, but well done, that is an incredible tip. Well and you've won yourself for £10 free bet with Bet Victor. Of course, that is a weekly competition, so play every week on our Facebook page. And every Friday, as always, is the Status Says Challenge. Our man, Angus Stato Lockroom, will give you five tips for the weekend. Tell us if you think each will be true or false, and the person with the most um, correct answers will get a £10 free bet, which will be There you go. It's as easy as eating apple pie with a bit of double cream on the top and a few sprinkles of yes, chocolate beautiful. flake as well. <laughs> we'll be back with more. Sweet bets next week in the lounge.